dear learner let us now try to capture the most beautiful creation of nature most colorful creation of nature the birds they don't sit for you for a long time to give you the sense of modeling they keep on flying and flying so only better option to get a photograph of a bird of your choice and keep it in front of you and try to capture its beauty the artist has chosen a small bird as his model since he could not capture one he has taken a photograph and he is drawing the bird with the help of this photograph it's a very simple bird with a, a blue grayish body a little white underneath but the head is very colorful the black head is beautified with a white patch under its eyes and the beaks are mixture of red and white since he is working on pencil not on color he will try to give a little sense of the difference of shades of the bird for example the bluish gray body will turn in pencil only into gray while the white part of the head will left as a paper white but the beak which is combination of both red and white would be done in lighter gray but darker than body but the upper head of the bird is absolutely black with a small eyes with red circle in the middle now he is working on the beak and red is here little grayish in pencil now he is giving the shading of the two parts of the beaks now to the head which is absolutely dark on the up, upper part and he will use a dark pencil 6b that must differentiate between the red on the beak and the dark black on the head now he is leaving the white part as a paper white upper part of the head is done it is dark tone now the eye is completed and it puts life to the study of the bird you notice a highlight on the pupil of the eyes that gives the liveliness of the bird now he is gradually 
coming to the body part of the bard which will be light grey one interesting thing about this bird the feather of this bird is not so clear is very smooth especially on the belly part of the bird the feather is almost invisible but the eight part of the wings on the top part of the body some feathers are visible and the texture of feathers has been already used by the artist with some strokes of the pencil he will give a shade of grey all over the body of the bird to characterize the special kind of bird now he is doing the lower part of the body under the wings which is darker in contrast with the belly part white and from this part comes out one of its leg which is gray but the lower part of the leg is red so it will turn into black in the black and white drawing small touch of shading with lines and this shading is bringing out the difference between the belly part and the wing part and the leg part will be dark like black or almost in this photograph we can see only one leg of the bird which is concealed beyond the rock on which it is sitting so you see the study of bird is complete and only the last dark part of the wing tail which i say remaining so dear learner you have learned how to draw a big animal like elephant from a small model and then a beautiful bird from a photograph my advice is always keep on sketching all kind of animals and birds whether it is colorful huge fearful lovable or elegant the movement and the spontaneity of your pencil work will help you to reach the maturity of your 
drawing. So keep on doing your sketches and drawing of animals and birds and come to the perfection after some exercises. Welcome dear learner, this is senior secondary level in painting course and we are going to learn something about animal study. This world is full of beautiful animals. Some animals are big and some are too small. Some are very lazy, they do not move much. Some are very speedy. As the creative people are always very much interested to capture this beauty of these animals, especially the painters. Painters try to capture the beauty and multicolor forms of peacock parakeet and the fearful lions and very beautifully painted skins of tigers. One thing is very interesting to note, while human figures are mainly vertical because they stand on two legs, on the other hand animals are generally horizontal because they stand on four legs. We have to study carefully all these animals in different shapes and different forms. Not only the animals, there are other creatures also like birds. Birds are the wonderful creation of God. They are full of colors, they are tweeting, they are sparkling and they are flying and we always try to capture movement, shapes, colors and form in this animal world. For the learners, it is best to go to the zoological garden to study the animals. You go and sit there for hours, choose your model whether a bird, whether a tiger, whether a lion or anything you like to capture with your pencil on your paper. But it is not always possible for you to go to the zoological garden and sometime it might be too far from your place where you stay. So what is the better option? You find some models of realistic appearance of these animals. For example, I have here one such model of an elephant. Otherwise, you can do one thing. You choose the photographs of the animals from any book, put it in front of you and try to capture the beauty of these animals, birds and other creatures. Now, our artist is trying to capture the beauty of an elephant. He has only a model made of wood, but this model is very realistic in appearance. So he will get the heaviness of the elephant, the form of the elephant and different parts of the elephant which is very beautifully done in this wooden sculpture. Let us see how our artist has managed to get a model of an elephant. This is a maiden wood, but no mean, it is totally realistic in appearance. So it is a very good substitute of a real elephant that is not available at the moment in the studio. Let us see how he is trying to capture the first again the structure of an elephant. Elephants has a very huge body, it is almost like a rock uh, the shape of the body. So 
he first is making the torso almost in a round solid shape then comes head little smaller than his body which is again uh, approximately around is in shape which is again lengthened with the trunk that, that is just loosely hang hanging from the head itself in between the head and the trunk we see the tusk of the elephant the, the white one and then four legs presumably the front leg of the elephant is little longer than the hind legs so you see the artist is now trying to draw the hind leg which is like a kamba or a pillar and again the lower part of the body that the belly part has been already drawn again you notice how smoothly he is using his pencil sometime in dark tone and sometime in a very light faint the uh, sign of the pencil you can ask a question why we use in some places darker tone and in some places lighter tone reason is very simple the first is that it gives an aesthetic quality the monotonous well like lines is very tedious to draw and also doesn't look very cool for this reason artist sometime use different intensity of the lines to bring a the perfect aesthetic quality other reason is by pressing your pencil to darker tone you can show some part with very hardness and some part with very softness of the body or the limbs of a model an elephant as you know is a huge in structure and it has also a huge ear there are different kinds of elephants indian elephants has smaller ears than that of african elephant and their shape is also different so when you study different kind of animals from different part of the world you have to take care to get the exact characteristics of these limbs interestingly though an elephant has a huge body their eyes are very very small it doesn't mean they uh, their sight is less powerful than uh, any other animals so they are also very sharp sighted animal now you see you have a lot of you see you have a, a lot of things to do after the body of the or the structure of the elephant is done the outline the outline is done now we are going to give the shading or the modeling of the elephant remember the legs in the hind sight are under shadow because the huge body is actually covering some part of the hind legs on the contrary the front legs are more visible than the hind legs because the light is straightly falling on the front legs the model is also have the same quality that is front of him so he is darkening the leg in the back side again the leg in the back side in the front part also la uh, uh, under shadow and this also give a sense of perspective 
the depth is created by this kind of shading. Always remember to use a pencil at the top, top end that will help you to manipulate the lead area more smoothly or widely because it has more mobility when you hold it at the back side. But if you hold it front then you have limited mobility to have the pencil. There are different kind of shading that you can use. One is a linear shading, other is dot or points and third one you can use the pencil directly on the paper then just rub it with your finger or a piece of cloth. So, it is your personal choice what kind of shading you like to do, but all shading has one purpose to give modeling. So, take care of getting the volume of the object that you that, that is in front of you. Since an elephant has a huge volume of body, so shading will require that kind of shading specially on the body part of the elephant. The little grass that the artist has used on the foreground is giving a sense that the elephants are vegetarian and live down all these. Now, he is drawing the ear of the elephant which is almost like a blade of a fan a little squarish in shape and to give it a projection he has used dark outline. You all know the ear is much projected from, from the body of an elephant. Now, he has come to the area of the head. The top of the head is very solid and we can see two lumps like thing and which is extended to the hanging trunk. Remember the skin of an elephant is not that smooth. It is very rough and sometime with a lot of cracks on the skin especially on the part of the trunk. It has a lot of creases on the front side. The textural quality of the head is different from the textural quality of the body. Body appears to be a little softer than the head part. Notice how the shade in the one side is giving the volume and the modeling of the trunk. He has left the task white which is coming out of the lower part of the head. The head part of the elephant is almost complete. Now, he will move to the body part after finishing the eyes. The darkening beyond the ears is very important that I have told you all already. 
that I have told you already because when you put a darker tone at the back of anything that seems to project and here you can see how the ear are now coming out of the body. Now artist has to give the rotundity of the belly part which is a major part of the elephant's body and this huge body part is just on the four legs and those four legs have to be very strong to carry the huge weight of the torso of an elephant. So when you draw the leg you have to take care that how the huge weight is on these four legs and that you can get only through the darkening and likening the pencil. You notice the grass in the front leg in the back side and this give you the sense of pressure that the leg is giving on the grass. That is how you can communicate the heaviness of the body of the elephant. There are few tricks an artist uses like here and there he put some dark line and some area untouched. So all these are the quality of artistry and that makes a beautiful work. But one thing you remember, animals are not like human model. They won't sit in front of you for a long time or stand for you. They keeps on, they keep on moving and you have to careful to finish it as early as possible when you are sketching. For the study work, you choose those animals who move less. For example, buffalo, cows, horses, they do not move much, they mostly stand for long time or just lying on the ground to give you chance to draw them. On the contrary, it is difficult to sketch birds. They do not stay in one place for a long time and do not allow you to study them. Since the light is coming from the top uh, because sun in most cases on, on the top, so upper part is brighter than the lower part. Now it is the finishing touch. Now you see there is some touch on the task and a darkening on the root of the task give a sense the task is coming out from inside. Dear learner, you must have watched the artist who was working with pencil on paper and also notice that how he handled the pencil softly and hardly on the paper to capture the beauty of the animal world. My advice will be to you, you keep on doing same thing, just grab piece of paper and four pencils and either go to the zoological garden or a garden nearby or get a photograph or a model and start using sketches of these beautiful animal worlds. Hopefully you have a lot of things watching this video. Mm -hmm.